Hi everybody, uh, welcome to this uh, first uh, session, or well, actually the, the first uh, parallel session. Um, we're going to talk about uh, modern PHP a little bit, um, so I'm assuming actually we're all uh, PHP developers. We're actually dealing with uh, PHP in our uh, daily life, um, and I came up with this concept of actually talking about uh, PHP as we should do it nowadays. So I'm going to, uh, going to explain a couple of things about uh, object-oriented programming, so OOP in, uh, in short. Um, I'm going to cover a couple of uh, topics and hopefully you can just follow along. Hope you, hopefully it's interesting, maybe there's some new uh, concepts also being uh, introduced. Um, we'll just see where it uh, gets us. Uh, the slides are online anyway, so you don't have to copy anything by hand or whatever. Um, my name is uh, Jesse Rijtsma. Um, if you didn't know me, uh, after looking at the goodie bag, actually you should know me. Uh, I wrote a book, a little book, uh, called Programming Joomla Plugins. I'm also the founder and uh, lead developer of a little, a little company called uh, Yerio. It's a lead developer actually of a one-man company, so that's, that's really like the size of the company. Um, I'm a trainer, I'm a speaker, I'm also the proud uh, uh, member of a so-called Zend uh, Z team. So actually uh, the talk of, uh, of Zeth is also something I do uh, uh, a couple of times uh, a year. Um, and sometimes I'm also uh, an untrained idiot uh, on a bicycle. I'm uh, from the Netherlands, but actually uh, a couple of years ago I, uh, I cycled all the way from Amsterdam to Barcelona. So I've been actually here before. Totally untrained. It's interesting anyway. So um, my talk is about um, a few concepts of OOP. Um, I'm going to cover interfaces, abstract classes. I'm going to cover uh, exceptions. Um, one thing I'm, I'm not covering is actually something that, that Zef in his talk already mentioned, uh, a couple of new exceptions. But I'm, uh, I'm going to explain the basics of why you should use uh, exceptions, what's useful about it, and how to use it in your own uh, code. The same for um, uh, namespaces, mixings, and traits. Um, and how many of you have been to Bangalore also uh, during the Juno World Conference? Not that many, which is good, <laughs> because I gave the same presentation there as well, but I skipped a couple of things. Uh, so this is supposed to be all new to you guys. So um, the problem or the, the, the interesting thing about modern PHP, it's, it's uh, suggesting actually there's an old way of doing PHP as well. Um, Zef in his talk already uh, mentioned like the, the whole progress of PHP coming from PHP FI, which is basically PHP 2, PHP 3, PHP 4, and now there's uh, PHP 4, 5 already for some time, actually longer than a decade, and now there's PHP 7 as well. So the PHP language is actually um, evolving as it comes along, and every time when it's evolving, it's actually new parts being added to the language, uh, allowing us PHP developers to do more with the language. Um, so that's showing actually there's always an old way of doing things. So for instance, the PHP 4 way of doing things is it's completely outdated. We shouldn't do it. There's now uh, modern practices. And some of these modern practices um, will be discussed during this talk. Um, and I'm not the inventor of this, this thing called modern PHP. There's a guy called uh, Josh Lockhart who uh, created a book, who wrote a book, which is really awesome. It's, it's, uh, it's only about 120 or 150 pages. Um, but it's, it's showing you as a PHP developer in what kind of way you should be thinking about your own code. So it assumes you're already developing PHP, you're already using uh, object-oriented uh, programming, but this is like the next level uh, of things. And a few of my things are now coming back in this, uh, this presentation. It's also um, assuming that we all want to use PHP 7. Um, well, during the keynote, all the hands were raised, so I assume that you already uh, are running uh, PHP 7, and it's not specifically modern PHP, but it's just the fastest way of, uh, of doing it. So this explains like the concept of uh, modern PHP, where it's coming from. Um, but let's get into details. Uh, this talk is about code, but this is actually um, trying to guide you and, and me as well through some basic concepts of the code, um, heading into a certain direction. So first of all, uh, we're going to cover interfaces and abstract classes. And how many of you are familiar with uh, these things, interfaces and abstract classes? How many of you are uh, really familiar with the difference between the two? How many of you are using abstract classes and interfaces? So that's, that's slightly less, um, but it's not everybody. So that's actually one of the main points. Um, after this talk, we should be actually heading towards uh, a new direction of using interfaces all the time. 
and actually not abstract classes. Well, I'm going to illustrate what the, the whole concept is. Um, is. Is this readable from the back? Yeah. yeah. So um, I'm going to walk through a couple of code pages and then uh, discuss like what's the use of uh, inheritance, what's the use of uh, abstract classes, and what's the use of, um, uh, of interfaces. So there's this, um, this JModel list uh, class. It has a couple of uh, get state and get items uh, methods, useful methods to use in your own model. This JModel list is, is right inside the Joomla core, so it, uh, it can be used. And it can be used, for instance, here in this code block. Uh, we have an example model, and this example model is extending from JModel list. So what is inheritance? Basically, all of the parent methods are inherited into our own, uh, into our own class. So uh, within our own class, we automatically have this get state method. We also have this get items method, but for some reason I decided actually to override this get items method uh, because I didn't like the original uh, behavior. Now the code usage is simple. We have an object, we have a class, uh, we instantiate the, the class into an object, and from that, mo uh, from that object we can call upon all the uh, parent methods and as well the, the child methods. So it doesn't actually mean uh, it doesn't mean matter actually where the method is located. We can just inherit, build upon the parent class, and that's making the whole thing uh, useful. So th this this is hopefully really familiar to you guys. Um, I'm showing it into basics because actually when we're dealing with abstract classes and when we're dealing with interfaces, we're supposed to um, think a little bit more elaborate about this. We have to think about what is this code actually doing. And this basic example of, of inheritance is making it easier for us to create a subclass, create a child class, and get automatically behavior into that class. So we're not only extending from it uh, out of uh, like a declaration, like hey, I'm extending from JModel list. Now I'm reusing the functionality of JModel list in my own class, whether I want to like it or not. It's, it's like fun adding functionality. Now a little bit more complex. Um, <coughs> this is adding a second class, actually, to the, or a third class to the whole uh, inheritance procedure. So I'm assuming this JModel legacy class, and instead of directly extending my own component class from it, I'm pushing in uh, a middle class in there, Herio model list. So I'm, I'm actually creating my own parent class, uh, which is extending again from the, the Joomla core. And why? Because maybe the, the functionality of get data from the, the Joomla core was so elaborate, was doing too many things that it didn't like. Uh, and I want to rewrite it into sp the, the specific way I want to use it. So the funny thing is actually, um, as an extension developer, um, I came to the conclusion that I needed to create so many different classes, all these different models, that all were behaving in a specific way, and all that functionality had to be reused um, and was not in the Joomla core. So instead of actually rebuilding it over and over again, I'm using inheritance again to, um, to create my own layer between the core and um, uh, a specific class. So again, I hope this is still like a really simple way that, that you're familiar with. How many of you actually created uh, a library class like this? <laughs> so the, the nice thing about it is um, because the Joomla core is actually uh, offering certain functionality, but you're adding another functionality that is, that is actually lacking in the Joomla core, simply by building upon inheritance, uh, allows you to overcome the problem that, that you want to reuse functionality, but it's not in the Joomla core yet. Um, so what we do as uh, OOP developers, we're extending classes, we're extending classes that were extended, we're building parents on parents on parents on parents and, and so on. And it gets kind of messy because that's the, the main issue. So um, the, the more classes we actually uh, add to this whole, to this, this whole thing, we get this tree-like hierarchy of, of different classes. And it becomes more difficult to actually maintain them. It becomes also more difficult to actually see where the functionality is coming from. So by looking at um, Back a slide. <coughs> By looking at the functionality with PHP Storm, we can easily navigate within uh, the code from the usage part into our own class part into the parent part. Uh, we can use PHP Storm for that, but if you're browsing through the code on, on GitHub, for instance, with a browser, um, it becomes really difficult to actually understand where's the functionality coming from every time you have to open a lot of different files, because there's actually no guarantee that get data, which is used, 
is actually coming from the, 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 the subclass or the parent class and, and so on. So simply by looking at this code, it becomes more complex because we're adding more classes to it. Um, and now comes the second point also, there's no guarantee actually that methods are used in a certain way. So if, go back a slide again, if my parent class is actually implementing this get data method, um, of course in the end I'm assuming that uh, there's usage code that is going to use that get data method. But actually there's no guarantee that this method is, is there uh, within our sub subclass, in our own library class or in the Julepore even. So when we're working with more classes using inheritance, it's actually um, only, only useful if we all use these different classes in this very same way. So we need a guarantee to, work to, to have these classes implemented actually in a certain way. Um, the solution of course is either abstract classes or interfaces. So this should still be like, uh, an easy thing to, uh, to, to come off. And what is an abstract class? An abstract class is uh, basically um, some kind of half-breed between functionality. For instance, this, this getState method is actually containing functionality. And by using inheritance, uh, everything within this uh, getState method is automatically inserted into our subclass. So it's the inheritance of functionality. And the second thing actually an abstract class is doing is that this getFor method is not implemented in the parent class. So we have to implement it into our subclass. So an abstract class with abstract methods is a way of guaranteeing that the subclass is actually containing these methods because the parent class is saying so. And this is nice because there's actually this invisible contract between the parent class and the subclass. The parent class says like, well, if you want to have this kind of functionality, you also have to implement the getForm method because otherwise the whole Joomla framework or all the MVC components, they, start, they stop working. And the child class is only extending from this, this abstract class, so there's the contract. So as soon as this extending is being done, the contract is being built and we have to guarantee that this get four method is there. The issue with this code is it's really basic, but it's not living up to a certain uh, principle, and that is, um, the dry code, don't repeat yourself, or the SRP code, the single responsibility principle, um, and why the, this abstract class is actually doing two things. It's trying to guarantee this contract, and it's adding functionality. And if we want to create clean code, we always have to have a single unit doing a single thing, one class doing one single thing. And an abstract, abstract class, um, simply by, by its nature, is already doing two things. It's trying to guarantee a contract, it's trying to guarantee functionality, and it's trying to implement functionality. Um, to me, an abstract class is already like a kind of a code smell. And actually, the solution would be to use interfaces. So instead of having one single abstract class, we can separate it into uh, a parent class and an interface. And the interface could look like JModel. Now, Within Joomla, we have seen this JModel uh, interface a lot of times, but how many of you are actually implementing it? And that's, that's kind of weird, because Joomla has invented this, this interface for us to use it, and the only thing we have to do is actually create a class and then say implement <coughs> JModel, and we're done. The only way that the Joomla core is going to guarantee that all the MVC models uh, and views and controllers are going to work in a similar way is actually by implementing all the same interfaces. So an interface is basically the contract that we're using already from within these abstract classes, but an abstract class is doing one thing or two things, an interface is doing only one thing. So actually this, this is the way we should actually head to that all our classes, um, if they're extending from J model or J model legacy or something, they should be implementing actually those interfaces as well. J model, J view, J controller, because they're all three interfaces. So basically, um, from my mind, all, everywhere where we see in the Joomla core that uh, abstract classes are still being used, we can re re rewrite them by actually splitting them up between an interface and an actual parent class. And this is already done in the Joomla core. Um, but there were little hands to my previous question, so actually we're not using it yet as we should actually do it. 
Um, I thought I had an extra slide as well, how to move actually this code from an abstract class into an interface driven thing. Um, and that is, we have an abstract class, we have two uh, parent methods that have functionality, we have one abstract method, get form. so we need to re-implement that into our own class. So this is the, the old style. Um, and we can rewrite it into that we already have this J model, but we don't have yet a get form um, a method somewhere in the interface. <coughs> so if it doesn't exist, well, we could create it. We can sim simply create our own interface for whatever method we have. And then if we have <coughs> those interfaces in place, we can still extend from that abstract class, but actually instead we're guaranteeing everything through interfaces instead of guaranteeing things through an abstract class. So this is actually showing also that whenever the Joomla core doesn't have an interface for specific methods, um, we shouldn't stop there. We should just look at our model and say like, hey, but my model is only working with specific methods. And for all those specific methods, for instance, this form, um, uh, get form method, uh, we should actually create an interface together with it. Clear? Um, the only thing that I'm wondering so, so now and then is actually, um, if we are creating interfaces to guarantee those contracts, and our MVC component should work in a specific way, then we could take it to the, to the final edge, actually, to create for every class we have a specific <coughs> interface. So, for instance, for every helper, for every model, for every view, for every controller, we can just add on interfaces um, just to make sure that, that our classes are always working in a certain way. And that interface could be then shared among different developers, so our code is always guaranteeing that, that backwards compatibility. Um, that would overdo things, I think, a little bit. So interfaces are there for contracts, but maybe a helper is not something that you want to add to your code as in like, hey, uh, other guys, I'm, uh, I'm having this helper and you can reuse it in your own component. Maybe a helper class is really defined as part of your own specific MVC implementation, while a model is something within your MVC implementation that could be reused. So you have to wonder actually per class, which, what kind of functionality is able to be re reused, what is, what is useful actually to reuse, and what is not. At least we have to think about it, because we now know that interfaces are something cool, they guarantee something in a specific way, and it's nice to uh, use them. So, um, hopefully we're um, ready for the next part. Um, Oh, so first of all, some recommendations, but I already mentioned it. Uh, so make sure that JModel is implemented everywhere in your, in your uh, models. It's, it's added to the Joomla core exactly for that purpose. So there's interfaces in the Joomla core that should actually be used. Um, so make sure you do. Extend from whatever you want to do, and, and if these two things do not add up, as in you have a specific JModel legacy class, but the methods of the JModel legacy class are not implemented or not stated in a specific interface, just create your own interface, because it's really easy. It takes just a couple of lines of code, as we've seen uh, before. So interfaces should be, in the end, everywhere, because interfaces are a better way to guarantee our code is going to work. Yeah? Excuse me, just a question. Uh, I see that uh, you uh, make an example with multi-implementation of an interface. There's multi-interface. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I've got an example in Juma of the use of multi-interface. Uh, yeah. Uh, is it do you only use one, or is it some case? Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good thing, isn't it? Just please repeat that. Yeah, so uh, your, your question is, um, here you can see that actually one class is extending from one parent class. That's, that's inheritance, and we don't have multiple inheritance. We cannot extend from multiple classes. So what we can do is do uh, an implementation of one class and then multiple classes, simply by separating them by comma. Um, and what would be the logic? Well, to me, the logic is that this J model class is actually defining our own class as a model. But um, in this case, I had a specific uh, model contract, maybe because there's a specific method that it only works for my component. So adding more interfaces is actually a really healthy way of dealing with interfaces. Another way would actually to redefine what, what kind of functionality could be reused. So uh, if your model is dealing with uh, publishing, and your view is also dealing with publishing, and your controller is also dealing with publishing, then you could actually create an interface called publishing. 
And that interface is guaranteeing actually for all those th th three different classes that, that the same methods are, are there and to be reused. So you could also guarantee um, specific functionality instead of just focusing on, for instance, in, in this case, uh, an entity or component. It could also behavior. And actually, the more interfaces you have, the more you actually thought about the right functionality. Uh, we're just trying to, to understand, uh, to remember if there is a, a case in Joomla where it's multi interface. Yeah, it's, 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 it's never, I mean, no, it, it's not, not implemented that much. Okay. But to me, actually, uh, it's a cleaner way actually of, of adding um, uh, the gen model dependency because the, the, the Joomla core is offering that functionality and I want to depend on that functionality. Um, but adding for all the functionality, the functionality I created a, a different interface. Another way of, of dealing with it would be actually that this contract is, is extending from JModel. So that's, that's also another option. Cool, next part, um, exceptions. Um, just for testing, how many of you are using exceptions? How many of you are not using it and don't have a clue what exceptions are? Um, I'm going to explain it in basics. What um, Zef already explained in his uh, keynote, um, an exception is basically the same as an error. The, the difference is actually that an error um, occurs and then it's like a dead end. Um, if an error occurs, like a PHP fatal error, the PHP execution stops. With an exception, it's behaving in a similar way, but actually when the exception occurs, when the error occurs, you're still able to fix that with um, programming. And that's actually basically catching the exception. And that way, when an error occurs, you can check what kind of error occurs, and then decide yourself whether you want to continue or not. Um, so this is basic uh, usage. Uh, somewhere in your code, you, you, can, you can generate the error. You can generate the exception uh, based on a, on a really basic parent class with a specific uh, error message. And then uh, we can somewhere else uh, catch the exception and whenever this exception occurs, we can actually uh, include the functionality within the uh, brace or in the, within the curly braces where the exception itself occurs, and then deal with the second part of the curly braces how how we should actually deal with it. So, for instance, if uh, a logging exception occurs, we can log right here in the try intersection or in the try um, uh, section. And then within the, the second, the catch section, we can say like, well, if, if there's an error with logging, I don't care, I just want to continue. Um, well, I had a logging example. So this is actually showing it in, uh, in real life as well. Um, I have this logger class, it has a static uh, write function. Uh, it's trying to write somewhere, but if it fails, if the log file itself is not uh, available or not writable or the, the file system is full, then I'm going to generate an exception. Um, and that means that whoever is going to use actually this, this class is going to be forced actually to be, is, is going to be forced to deal with it. Um, the cool thing actually about exceptions and PHP errors is that whenever a PHP error occurs, you know for sure that, that something is going to fail afterwards. Um, if is writable would return false and we're going to write the file anyway, it's like unexpected behavior. Actually, this simple check is allowing us to check for things, so it's expected behavior. So we're expecting that if the log file is not writable, we're going to fail with this whole function. Now, on the other hand, um, if it's going to fail, if this function is going to fail, we need to deal with it, and in this case, I'm not dying, I'm not quitting the application, I'm just continuing actually with an echo and then all the code that, that comes later is still being executed. So the nice thing about this exception is um, I needed to rewrite uh, my own usage code because the original code was generating an exception. And actually that's more or less the same thing as what I explained earlier about interfaces. Um, with an interface, the parent class or the, the interface is guaranteeing <coughs> specific functionality with an exception, it's exactly the same thing. The exception is generated somewhere, and the usage part is going to needing to deal with it because otherwise the code is going to fail. Now, the exception class itself is really generic, um, and there's a couple of subclasses. So instead of actually <coughs> generating an exception, 
we can generate a bad method call exception. If that's actually a class name that is better describing what we're failing with than just a generic exception. Actually, um, the whole purpose of uh, the exception class is that it's so non-saying, it's, it's not generating anything useful, it's just saying like, hey, there's an exception. <laughs> the whole purpose of an exception is actually not to use this basic exception class, but to use one of the subclasses instead. Um, again, if we look in the Joomla core, um, there's a lot of exceptions already being thrown, so that's part of the, the rewrites uh, already happening nowadays. But a lot of these exceptions are actually the basic exception class and not an extent of the real exception class. Now if I go back um, here, no, here, then I can see actually there's um, a throwing of some kind of, of a kind of exception when the log fails. And the log message is identifying actually what goes wrong. But this message could also be translated into um, Spanish or in German or whatever. So actually the, the message itself is, is uh, something to communicate towards the user but it's not something to do to communicate towards uh, the developer. And the only thing that, that is, is stable in this code is actually the name of the class. And then the name of the class is not telling anything about what is actually the exception about. So there's something going wrong, but the exception class is not telling what is going wrong. So the whole purpose of choosing your name is actually to choose a name that is uh, indicating already like, hey, but we had a problem with a full file system or we had a problem with the log file not being able to be written to. Um, they might come to the conclusion that these exceptions are, are there in PHP, but actually the, the exception we want to generate is not there. So for instance, there's not a file system full <coughs> exception. Um, the solution is really simple, create it. So in the next slide, I'm going to show you how it's being created, but, but as soon as we're dealing with exceptions, we're supposed to actually think about what should be the name of the class that is actually being used for that exception. So a couple of things, I came up with a uh, component not found exception. It seems really, really logical. Whenever the component is not found, there's an exception already being generated, but that exception should actually be named component not found exception. So anyone actually facing this exception already knows simply by the class name what it is. Um, well, the same for the, the rest, plugin or the not enabled exception, so on. Now, how, how to create such, such an exception? Um, well, this is it. So there's no point actually in not creating your own exceptions. Um, and again, because a component is always doing something specifically on top of the Joomla core, the Joomla core, slide back, might have these exceptions installed. But then if we have something really specific for our component, for instance, um, well, whatever. Uh, I don't come up with a good example right now, but, but you can imagine actually that you want to create your own custom exceptions whenever the Joomla core does not generate uh, an, or does not contain a class that is specific already enough. Um, this is what I do all the time. Theoretically, um, it's inheritance. So it's a parent class and a child class, and the parent class has functionality. Theoretically, you could override it with more complex stuff. Um, I say theoretically because I've never found really the use of it, but theoretically what you could do is just uh, create your own logging system that a specific type of uh, exception um, is being handled in a specific way. So back to the logging example, perhaps you want to create a logging mechanism that is logging exceptions all the time. But whenever uh, the exception occurs with the logging principle itself, you would have this recursive thing, this recursive loop. So actually you want to have uh, an exception based on a uh, parent class that has this logging functionality, um, but a specific file system full exception that does not have logging at all. Um, that's part two. So I'm trying to actually show you like, hey, there's, there's ingredients in PHP that, is, that are there already for usage. But we actually should use it, use it, should embrace it into our own uh, MPC component to make use of it and, and well, upgrade to the modern, the modern standards. Um, the difficult one is actually namespaces. Um, so again, raise of hands. How many of you are using namespaces? Cool. Um, <coughs> no, I have a question about yeah. the exception. Uh, 
Yeah, so I, uh, to repeat the question, um, or was not a question but a comment, actually what, I, what, I'm, what I'm missing here in the slide is that I'm still using here the regular exception class, but not the specific exception class. Well, that's my question, are yeah. we supposed to use exception? Because what if you look for one specific one, but actually something else is wrong? Yeah, so the purpose would actually be to duplicate these last four lines, copy them th th right here, and then change actually this first exception into the specific exception. So what you're actually doing is you're trying something, then you're catching the specific uh, specific exception, then you're uh, catching another specific exception, and even if that fails more or less, then you're uh, falling back onto the main exception. Because what I see in the Joomla code is we just catch exception everywhere. Yeah. Because it's a catch all of course. Yeah, and, and that still makes sense somehow, of course, but as soon as you're moving into creating your own exception classes, it also makes sure it makes sense that you're uh, more specific on uh, the catching of the exceptions as well. So to have a whole list of exceptions that are narrowing down the problem would make sense. So for instance, if we have um, a, a regular exception, and then on top of that we have uh, a, a component exception, so a specific component fails to do something, um, but then we have uh, the, the file system full exception, or uh, in, in between there could still be uh, log file not writable exception. Because what they and also do is they, you can add an error code when you throw the exception. Yeah, yeah. And you could check if you have one catch, you could actually also filter on the error code if you want to. Exactly, yeah. yeah. I, I hear uh, applauding in the other room. Are we already. Uh, no? No, no. no. <laughs> we have time. Still five minutes. They have a more fun. We start a little bit later, so. Ah, oh, okay. Go to. Uh, Next slide. Um, namespaces. So I already um, asked around like how many of you are using it. Yeah. Oh. Just a slightly quick. No, then the slide Yeah, this one. This one, yeah. Yeah. The two string here. When you have returned class. Yeah. The class, you don't need the class here. You need the class. Because here it returns the example exception class. Yeah. Well, it's this, this is just a, this is just a theoretical yeah. thing. But whenever we actually want to use it in a, in a way like this, this is not standard, but, but let's say it would be standard, then actually we could just uh, convert this object into a string, because the echo statement requires a string, and we do that because of this magic two-string method. Yeah, but you want the class of the function that takes, which is the other one. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah. But that's, that's why it's actually a dummy example. Okay. So it's, it's just there to, to show you, it's, yeah. it's object-oriented programming. So it's, it's more interesting to, yeah, to create well, different examples. you don't examples. have anything which uh, at that time can tell which one, uh, no. the, the name of the, of the, the class that you No, so to do that actually you, you need a backtrace of all the PHP yeah. code being executed. But which that's still like something to put there. Yeah. When the, when the beginning activated the, the debug system, mm -hmm. uh, we have the backtrace. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <coughs> cool. Namespaces. Um, <coughs> namespaces, if you're new to it, it's a kind of uh, complex thing, first of all, but, but um, what I always say, like, it's a virtual file system. So your, your file is containing a specific class, that, that class lives somewhere in the file system, and if that file system could be Yerio, Joomla, Dynamic 404, Helpers Matching, then actually the namespace could be equivalent to that very same path. So namespaces actually solve one specific thing, and that is that um, we could have really complex class names that are located somewhere on the file system. But if we um, if we keep the, the the namespacing and the directory structure in sync, we have a much easier way to actually locate classes. Um, another thing is actually because of this namespace thing, because this this virtual uh, file system, every class already has a place somewhere in this virtual file system called namespaces. Um, and whenever uh, somebody creates a new class called matching, because of the namespacing, there's al already a guarantee that my matching class and the other matching class don't conflict because they're living in different file systems, they're living in different namespaces. So actually a namespace is something we should be using, 
Um, it's again modern PHP. It has been in PHP already uh, for ages. Um, I believe already like 10 years. Um, and the cool thing is it's, it's solving specific things. Uh, to use it, uh, whenever we require a certain class that is inside the namespace, we have to call, about, call upon the whole path, or we can use an alias for that path, uh, or we could use uh, a specific alias for part of the class name, um, and so on. So this is showing the usage. Um, you really have to get practical with this to get used to it. So in a couple of slides, if you're not new to it, or if you're new to it, it's just not possible to actually show you all the thing. The best trick is actually that to remember that that actually the namespace is more like a fertile file system than it makes sense actually how to use it. Um, the problem again is Joomla. No, that's that's it's not a problem at all. But in Joomla we have legacy code. We have code that that, that is existing already there for ages, and we have to rewrite that to modern standards. So what's already happening is that within the Joomla framework, so the separate library with all these kinds of utilities. This renaming is already done. Uh, for instance, the old J registry class is now Joomla registry. J array helper is now in a specific utilities box, and then array helper and J URI. It's not being replaced by some other class, but it's actually extending from one of these framework classes. So whenever we are actually using simple basic classes in our own code, uh, we should actually be heading first to the Joomla framework to see if there's some kind of equivalent class that we want to use instead of going to the legacy classes uh, or the, well, Joomla classes. Um, the problem is that, that I, I scanned the whole code of the CMS, and these are the only three instances that I actually see these namespaces. Um, so the challenge is actually that the, the Joomla CMS is only slowly adapting, slowly being modified into actually a namespace variation. So as soon as you're trying actually to implement namespaces yourself in your own Joomla component, um, you immediately get this half-breed of non-namespaced and namespaced code. Um, and it just depends whether you want to be on the front line of doing that or that you want to do that if there's like emphasis parent classes to force you into the usage of namespaces. So it's kind of, well, not messy, but it's, it's like a half-breed situation and we just have to struggle a little bit like how to implement it. Still, namespaces are there, namespaces are cool, namespaces should be used, and actually because the Joomla framework is also showing that the functionality could be moved outside of the Joomla core into the Joomla framework, we could do the same. So instead of actually relying on the Joomla core, we are also relying on our own, uh, our own classes, and those classes, if they, they are containing functionality that is also working without Joomla, we could just as well create, create a library of that functionality and use in that library uh, completely namespaced uh, code. So again, uh, Joomla is not using it that much yet, but there's nothing stopping us from actually implementing it. Um, where to start? Well, first of all, most of the helper classes I'm using is something that you can easily convert into uh, namespaces, because a lot of times the helper classes you have are only being used in your own code. So that's easy to be, re to be uh, replaced. And then the helper classes themselves could be namespace, or you could use actually code from the helper classes and uh, put it into a library class and make that library class uh, uh, depending on namespaces, just as it is with uh, the Joomla framework. And earlier we saw also the benefit of interfaces. So interfaces are a, a whole new breed of classes and they need to be put somewhere. So for instance, what you could do is create in your MVC component a subfolder called interfaces or subfolder called contracts, but you might as well create a library class out of, out of it to have a library classes with only the interfaces that you actually want to use in your own uh, components. Yeah? So you, you are doing that already? No. <laughs> because I but I, I want to. Uh, because I have a question about the class loading. If you do that in your own component, yeah. if you to ask if you do that loading, class loading then through Composer or yeah. the Joomla class loader? Yeah, so it comes back into the, the, the auto-loading principle. Uh, there's, there's actually two auto-loaders at this moment. There's a, the, the, the vendor uh, Composer-based auto-loader and there's the Joomla auto-loader. What you can do is extend the Joomla auto-loader with your own functionality so it's actually able to find your own classes. But it's like an extra step and it's, uh, it's a chapter in my book. 
question. So if, if, if there are any questions about that, then you can read the book and then come <laughs> tomorrow to me or whatever. Uh, with the uh, namespaces, you're yeah. supposed to uppercase the first letters, which can be a problem on the file system. Yeah. Uh, because Windows, of course, is not case sensitive and the Unix is. Is that still true? Yeah. It I is. I have a problem with that. Okay. So I was wondering if it was just something I was doing. Uh, to, m to my understanding, um, well, if, if you have two files with, uh, with both uppercase and lowercase and they're on the same file system and you're running Windows, then you have the issue of finding the right file. Um, and then it might be like directory-based uh, sort ordering. And I think um, I made the, the folder names in general, all my folder names are with lowercase. Yeah, yeah. Only they have to be uppercase, otherwise the upload is not finding them. Yeah, exactly. Well, um, I, I actually didn't know about it, but, but uh, to, to me, like the whole auto-loading mechanism, uh, which is used by Composer, for instance, also works on uh, Windows in the same way. Um, but as long as you don't have like conflicts, then it's going to locate the file for you anyway, whether it's uh, uppercase or lowercase. So it's just depending more like if you implement a standard and if there's not uh, a path equivalent with lowercase, then it doesn't matter whether it's actually lowercase or uppercase. uppercase. Right? But let, let's, let's talk about that later yeah, on. Do yeah, you have a question still? Uh, regarding the other loading. Yeah. Uh, do we still need to do that? Do we still need to require some files or just mentioning in the next phase yeah. the other loader? Well, that, so th this is extending a little bit from the question uh, uh, you had earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, the problem is that we still have like multiple standards. The standard that is for sure going to be used is still the Joomla standard, but then the Joomla auto-loading mechanism can be extended with whatever mechanism you want to have. Um, and the, the composer directories are there in Joomla as well, but they're part of the core, even the, the log file is thought part of the core, that should be. Um, and that means actually you shouldn't actually modify it because that would be a core hack. So instead of actually um, using composer the Joomla way, I would suggest actually use composer your own way and that means that it's uh, unable to, uh, Joomla is unable to find your own classes by default. So then you're extending from the Joomla auto loader to make that possible. And well, we, we do have multiple standards at this moment. That's, that's like the, 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 the problem we have to face. But Joomla has this flexibility of adding more auto loaders. So that should solve the, the, the problem. Um, the last part. Mix-ins and traits. Um, how many of you are uh, familiar with traits? How many of you are actually using traits? Nice. Um, traits um, solve a specific issue. And I came back on that um, when we were dealing with interfaces. Um, you, can, you can implement multiple interfaces at the same time, but you cannot extend from multiple parent classes at the same time. Um, so this problem is actually fa uh, is, is, uh, is solved uh, by using a, a construct called traits. Um, I'm first skipping to this trait part and then I'm coming back to the mix-in part. Um, a trait is basically a class, but instead of having a, a class name, it's a trait. The cool thing about traits is that we are able to extend um, from multiple traits at once, um, which means actually that if we want to have a class that is uh, extending from multiple classes. One of these classes should actually be a class, the parent class, and all these other classes could be traits. So the nice thing about traits is actually it's, it's solving the issue of, um, of having uh, no multiple in inheritance. With uh, traits, we suddenly do have multiple inheritance. So this sounds really cool. This sounds really something like you should use. It's available in PHP 5.4. Um, I had the pleasure last week of actually having a customer not being able to run my code because I added traits to it. So that customer was still on PHP 5.2. <laughs> so then I said like, well, there's a different kind of problem going on. Um, so the nice thing is actually that traits solve a specific issue. And if you have a lot of functionality and all that functionality has to spread out um, following this single responsibility principle across multiple classes, then traits might be the solution. Um, I say it might be, because the problem is actually that if you have a class and that uh, class is extending from a parent, then that's, that's already like um, a situation uh, I explained earlier that, that we don't know anymore which method is coming from where. 
So we have an inheritance tree and it becomes more difficult actually to locate the right method, the right implementation, if we have multiple classes in that inheritance tree. So multiple inheritance itself, traits, complicate that matter even further. So one suggestion I would say is that whenever we have traits, we should also have interfaces for every trait that we implement. So in other words, um, traits is functionality. They add something to an existing class. If we have multiple traits, we also want to have multiple contracts to guarantee that that subclass that is extending from the traits and the parent class is always behaving in a specific way. And again, the right way of actually guaranteeing things, the right way of building contracts would be interfaces. So what I would suggest is that one single subclass that has one single parent, but multiple traits, multiple interfaces. And as soon as you speak that out loud, you uh, know right away that it's more complicated. So actually traits are there to solve a specific issue, but they're complicating things as well. One way actually to deal with that is um, not by using traits, by, by using uh, mixins. So now I go back to the principle of mixins. And they, they allow for a, 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 a specific trick. Um, and that trick is relying on a magic function call. And meaning actually that whenever our class needs a certain functionality and it's unable to find it in its own class, so it's looking for a specific method and it's only able to find that class, um, no, it's, it's not able to find it, that method within its, within its own boundaries or its parent boundaries or even like traits, then it needs to be located elsewhere. And um, a, a mix-in would be able to mix that other functionality into that specific class by using the trick I'm going to show you in the next slides. Um, who has heard of composition? I, I would almost call mixins a kind of composition, but the nicer way of actually to do composition would be through dependency injection. Um, with dependency injection, basically the, the mixins would come uh, from, from the top and uh, from the outside in. Well, actually with mixins, you're actually calling upon functionality from the inside out. So the class itself is responsible for fetching the functionality that it wants, which is to some the wrong way of doing things. But it's too far to actually have another presentation on dependency injection, maybe next year. Um, so first, uh, what is a mixin? Say we have a subclass, it's um, extending for a pair from uh, some kind of parent, um, and there, there's not the functionality that, that we actually need. Um, but there is something called a mixin array, and it has this reference to something called alertable. And um, simply because of this, this, we suddenly have this method called alert. So where is this method alert actually coming from? Well, it's definitely not coming from this, um, this uh, child class itself. So it might actually come from the parent class. So let's locate the parent class instead. And then we actually see that, that again, there's no alert method. But there's a completely different class that actually contains this method called alert. That's the class called <coughs> alert call. So this reference is actually back into the array we created on the previous slide. And the magic call function, a uh, magic function call, um, allows us actually to take whatever method does not exist in our own class and actually translate it into the functionality of a different class. <coughs> so this is not inheritance. This is basically calling upon a different class located somewhere else and adding that functionality into our own method right here. So this is a mixing and it's actually solving one issue of traits, but it's actually doing still the same thing, but in a different way. It's still a complex thing that, that does not allow us actually to locate that method alert easily. So that's the downside of uh, mixing. What's the advantage of using mixing? I would use that to be a trait for that. Yeah, so the, the, the big difference between a trait and a mixing is that uh, with a trait, everything is hard-coded. So if you have a, a, a subclass and you want to add a mix-in, you use the use statement to, to sorry, if you, if you have a subclass and you want to add a trait, uh, you're, you're using the use keyword to actually import that code. Um, but with, with the mix-in, this is called upon dynamically. So theoretically, this class is behaving in different ways. And depending on that behavior, this switch is behaving differently as well. So um, you could build dynamic traits, which is un impossible with the traits itself. I'm not sure if that's a good thing. No. 
And the main thing why mix-ins were really popular a couple of years ago was actually because of PHP 5.4 re being required for uh, trades. While actually PHP 5. Point whatever, um, then, then still this mix-in method works. And now the, the only difference is because, well, 5.3 and older is dead. Um, the difference is mainly that, that trades are like static coding, mixings are still allowing some kind of dynamic coding. But every time when you do that more dynamically, the code becomes more illogical actually to look at, so that's the, the difficult thing. Still, trades are there in PHP 5.4. I don't know what the minimum requirement is of Joomla at this point. Yeah. But uh, hopefully in the future it's going to be PHP 5.4, or actually in your own sites you're going to rely of course on PHP 7, so we, we still can use traits and it's, it's nice new functionality. Yeah, keep a few things complained on 5.4 at all. Yeah, so the, it's five, five for them. There, there's compatibility issues. Yeah. Um, let's wrap it up. I uh, showed you a couple of um, things. Um, that, that might be interesting to you. Uh, there's much more uh, to, uh, to cover. Dependency injection, I already mentioned it. Uh, unit testing, maybe combined with the reflection API. And I just, just wanted to show you a couple of keywords that, that, that are supposed to actually expand your knowledge and like show you, hey, there's, there's the, the old PHP 4 style of coding, but actually there's much more in PHP to, to discover. And actually there's nothing stopping you from actually implementing those new, new code structures within your own uh, Joomla site or Joomla components. So um, if you have any qu questions, uh, let's uh, come afterwards, uh, after the, the, the break to me, uh, or during the break to me. Um, and I, I hope you liked the little bits about different pieces of the <laughs>